our invited Pastor Elin, and uh, is quite a regular <laughs> preacher to our congregation. We invite her to share with us the Word of God, stepping out and stepping up. Amen. Let's welcome Pastor Elin. Amen. Sound check. I'm on. Okay. A very good morning to everyone. Good morning, I'm glad and thank you for inviting me back to share with you again. And this morning, I'd like to, I know it's, we are one day past the Yuan Xiao Jie, is it? So I wish you a happy Lunar New Year. I guess the decorations are still up. So uh, thank you. And you know, during the Lunar New Year season, anybody travel? No? <laughs> Some didn't? Better not. Okay. You know, it was interesting, you know, when I was... Uh, uh, looking at and uh, reading the news, okay, it was it was said that there were oh, is my are my slides up? Okay, now that you know, there, it's interesting. Okay, so today it was interesting that during the Lunar New Year season, it was reported that a record of nine billion, well, nine billion, uh, China experienced nine billion domestic trips happening in China. Imagine nine billion. And global air travel, reported by the news, is finally exceeded the pre-COVID level in 2024. Wow, you know, so what does it tell us? It tells us that we are, you know, there was a prophetic word that was given by Cindy Jacobs. I think many of you have heard of her, familiar of the ministry, under the intercessors and the uh, prophetic council. You know, they released a word. In last year, in October 2023, that says that 2024 is a year of open doors. And as I was praying and I was thinking about, you know, what is God saying to us? What is God doing in, our, in, our, in the world and in our midst? And the word that came to me, and as I was reading the news, I said, wow, really this is a year of open doors. It's a year where air travel has resumed and people are traveling, their opportunities, their uh, businesses or their things that are happening out there at the moment. And so today I want to share and bring a message to you and I changed it a little bit to talk about how God is calling us to step out. To step out of comfort zone but stepping out in power and authority. So today I want to leave you with two things that uh, through my message is how do I grow and step out in power? How do I step out in the authority that God has given to us? And so today I want to start by sharing a story about a businessman, okay, stepping out, right? He wanted to open a seafood restaurant at a famous seafront. So he rented a shop. But he realized that his shop was sandwiched between two larger and more famous seafood chains. And what happened? The first store put up a sign that says, Buy one crab, one free crab. And then the other store didn't want to be outdone. They put up a sign that says, Largest and freshest seafood selection, including lobsters and crabs. So one on the right side that says, buy one, get one free. The other one says, larger selection of seafood. And he was a small store. Not wanting to be outdone, he thought to himself. And he put up a sign that says, main entrance. <laughs> you know, what, we tell, what can we learn from this businessman is, sometimes in life, we get intimidated by the people on my right and the people on my left. And we think, oh, maybe I shouldn't do this. Or maybe I, I should just back off and, and let it go. But today, God is calling to us to step out of our comfort zone. And we may be experiencing challenges, roadblocks, and challenge, uh, obstacles. But today, do not despise yourself. Do not despise the limited resources or what you have. But I believe that God is calling you, brothers and sisters, to rise up, to seize and lay hold of the opportunities that God has in store for you. Can I hear amen? Amen. 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 And today I want to share with you from the book of Zechariah of how your best time is out there and it's not yet over. So I want to invite you to turn in your book Bibles. Okay, we don't, I don't have it on the screen. So it's a good opportunity to take out your Bibles, okay, and turn and open your Bibles, or if you have a phone, turn your Bibles and open to Zechariah chapter 4, and I'm going to be reading from verse 1 all the way to verse 10. Okay, so open your Bibles, and I'm going to read this together. Zechariah chapter 4, reading from verse 1. It says, Now the angel who 
talked with me, came back and wakened me as a man who is wakened out of his sleep. And he said to me, what do you see? So I said, I'm looking and there is a lampstand of solid gold with a bowl on top of it. And on the stand, seven lamps with seven pipes to the seven lamps. Two olive trees are by it, one at the right side of the bowl and the other on its left. So I answered and spoke to the angel who talked with me, saying, What are these, my Lord? Then the angel who talked with me answered and said to me, Do you not know what are these? And I said, No, my Lord. So he answered and said to me, This is the word of the Lord to Zerubbabel. It's not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord of hosts. Who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain, and he shall bring forth the capstones with shouts of grace, grace to it. Moreover, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation of this temple, and his hands shall also finish it. Then you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. For who has despised the days of small things? For the seven rejoice to see the plumb line, the hand of Zerubbabel. These are the eyes of the Lord who scan to and fro throughout the whole earth. So let's pray. Father, we thank you for today's word. I pray that as we look, read your word and learn, glean from your word, Holy Spirit, come and speak to us. We take authority over every distraction, every tiredness. And Lord, we want to take authority that you will begin to open our eyes and your ears to hear that which the Spirit of the Lord desires to speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today as we look at this passage, you know, it's... Um, is a, it's a passage that um, talks about how, you know, Zechariah, whose name means the Yahweh, remember, was appointed by God to challenge and um, encourage the people to re finish the task of rebuilding the temple. So what happened was this. The Israelites were taken to captivity. Uh, I can't flip the slide, so I will need your help. Uh, they were taken into captivity, and what happened is that under King Cyrus of Persia, in 536 BC, they were allowed to return back to their homeland. And when they returned back to their homeland, it was said that they were the, they're poor, they had no resources, and you know, it was an uphill task to rebuild the temple. And so what happened is, under the leadership of Joshua and Zerubbabel, they set out to build the temple. But what happened is this, they experienced... A, apathy, opposition from the Samaritans, from the Persian government, government at that point in time, and the building stopped for 18 years. And so it was in this 18 years that the building stopped. So imagine you build a foundation and you stop for 18 years. Has anybody done that before? I don't think in Singapore it happened. Lah. Maybe another country, yes. <laughs> okay. And so for 18 years, the building stopped. And this is why the prophet Zechariah spoke a word to say, you know, it's time that we finish rebuilding this temple. And I believe that this morning, God has given all of us here a dream, a vision, a goal that He wants us to fulfill. But somehow, like the children of Israel, you stopped. Maybe it's parked one side, you started something, but you just didn't quite finish it. Now, there are three things that will hinder us from finishing what we have started to do. I'm going to share with you three things. And the first hindrance is often despair. What is despair? Despair is when we see something, wow, so much things to do, so much clutter to clear. I can imagine Chinese New Year period, some of you will be clearing your storeroom, clearing your house. And sometimes when you realize, wow, there's so many things, wow, just can't do it. Right? So it's despair. And, how, and the second one is discouragement. We may see something, we get discouraged by what people say or setbacks we experience and then we just stop. Now the third one is self-doubt. Now self-doubt is when they say, you sure you can do it? You sure or not? You don't have the resources. Who you think you are? So self-doubt can stop us from fulfilling and doing and completing the work. So there are three things that I will give on the other side. How do we overcome them? We overcome them by three things from the passage. Number one, you overcome by the power of the Holy Spirit. Everybody say me, the power of the Holy Spirit. First one. The second one is by a resolve to finish. And the third is by, is by um, reclaiming your authority. So we need to 
know there's power of the Holy Spirit given to us, we need to have a resolve to say, I won't finish it. And there's authority that God has given to you. So I'm going to share three points. And then we're going to have a time of declaration and prayer at the end. Now the first one, how do we overcome despair by the power of the Holy Spirit? Now, in Ezra chapter 3 verse 12, so if you, I refer back to Ezra chapter 3 verse 12, where the account, the historical account of how the rebuilding started and throughout the rebuilding process, it tells us that when the foundation of the temple was built, many of the priests, the Levites, the head of the father's house, wept with a loud voice when the foundation was laid before their eyes. But some shouted with joy. Now why did they weep? You know, when they laid the foundation, they started to cry because they realized it was so, uh, it was a lack of splendor compared to Solomon's temple. And so, because of that, it's interesting in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 2 to 5, the angel woke the prophet up from his slumber and showed him a vision of a lampstand with a solid gold. Uh, of bow of, on top of seven lambs and seven pipes to the lamb. So it's a picture that I, I found Okay, that looked like that. That was the vision that Zechariah probably saw in his vision. And what happened is that on the right and left, it talks about two olive trees. Now, when we look at olive trees, what does olive tree produce? Olive oil. And what does oil represent? The Holy Spirit, that's right. Well, so oil produces the Holy... I mean, oil is a symbolic representation of the Holy Spirit. And what is this vision reminding Zechariah? This vision that Zechariah saw and he spoke to Zerubbabel was to tell him, it is not about your own might, your power, but it's by the Holy Spirit. It's by the Holy Spirit. Now, I want to share with you what is the definition of might. Might, it means force, strength, strong or valent. You know, might is like how much muscles you have. You know, if anybody go to the gym to work out. You know, it's like I read I have six packs, I got muscles, I've got, you know, good physique. I can do it. I get a job done. Right, so it talks about power. Might is about um, our force or strength. Now, power, okay, interesting. This power, it doesn't talk about the Spirit's power, Holy Spirit's power, but it talks about the firm, vigor, ability, strength, and wealth. It talks about resources. Because at the time, Zerubbabel was wondering, I don't have resources to build the temple. You remember when... King David, uh, Solomon built the temple. Uh, King David had to spend many years preparing, right? He had to cut down the cedars of Lebanon. He had to go and get from Tyre the wood. You know, he had spent a number of years gathering all the resources so that Solomon could build the temple. But in this case, the Zerubbabel had all these resources. He didn't. He didn't have any of the resources that David accumulated for his son Solomon to build. And so that's why they begin to weep and say, I don't have resources. Right? And the next thing, it talks about spirit. What is spirit? Spirit is wind, breath, and mind. And what it tells us is not by force, it's not by resources, but it's by the Spirit of God that will enable you to accomplish the task. You know, in Zechariah chapter 4, verse 7, it says this, you know, who are you, O great mountain? Before Zerubbabel, you shall become a plain. Have you ever heard and read a story about how villagers cut through a mountain to build a road? It was said that in a country in, in China, uh, there was, there was um, uh, a village, okay, that had to, um, that the villagers had to trek six hours just and go through eight townships to arrive at the, um, the next place to sell their things. And they agreed that they desperately need a road. But they say that, how am I going to cut a road through a tunnel? So they literally use chisels and hammers, like what you see in a picture. And they say, if I couldn't do it one year, I'll try two years. If two years is not enough, you do it three. Now make a guess how many years they took. 15 years. 
So it took 15 years to finally cut a road through the mountains to the other side. It was said that the people in this village took 15 years to construct a, a, a 1,526 meter road using simple tools like hammer and chisel to cut through a mountain. The Bible tells us that Zerubbabel took 20 years to finish the temple. Have you ever done something for 20 years? Build a house that takes 20 years. Some of us will be thinking, oh, 20 years is too long, you know. But the thing is that, but how many of us believe that today God can accelerate what He can do in our midst because we have the Holy Spirit with us? Can someone say amen? amen. You know, the Bible tells us that it before Pentecost, Jesus had how many disciples? Twelve. He sent out how many? Seventy. That's all he did. For three years when he served, Jesus, the Son of God, the Son of Man, 12 disciples, 70 were sent out. But in the, after Pentecost, how many in one day? 3,000. There was an acceleration, isn't it? From 12 disciples, 70 disciples, there was acceleration to 3,000 in one day alone. And this is why, you know, I believe that today, if you are facing and experiencing a mountain before you, it's not about your resources. It's not about what you can do with your strength. But it's how are we tapping into the power of the Spirit to get it done. You know, it was said that John chapter 14 Verse 26, 16, it says, And I will pray to the Father, and He will give you another helper that will abide with you forever. The Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive, because it neither sees nor know Him. And you will know Him, for He dwells with you and will be in you. What it says is that when the disciples lived with Jesus, they saw His miracles, they saw how He healed the sick, cast out demons, raised the dead, and fed 5,000. Wow, Jesus did all these. But today we have the Holy Spirit. Can we do all those? Yes, we can. Because this Holy Spirit is like a helper. He said he will send a helper. Now what is a helper? It's a, a paraclete in the legal terms. It's a counsellor. It's someone who will help you, who fight with you. And fight for you, not fight with you. Okay, now John chapter 16 verse 7, it says that Jesus has given us the Holy Spirit. He says that it is to your advantage that I go away. For if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I depart, I will send him to you. So what it means is that when we have the Holy Spirit, the Bible tells us we will do exceedingly, abundantly, greater, far beyond, isn't it? You all say yes. Amen. Amen. But what is stopping us from standing and seeing it happen? What is it? I believe it's because we have no awareness. We forgot that we have that. Imagine if you have a million dollars, or now one million is not much, one billion dollars. Imagine you have a billion dollars in a bank, but you starve because you didn't know you have it. You know, having, being a Christian, a believer without power is like have, being a policeman without a gun. Or a gun without bullets. Or a light bulb without electricity. And this is what often we as believers, we live like our lives like. Without power. We forgot that we have the source, which is the Holy Spirit, and how have we consulted Him? How have we tapped into Him? How have we sought Him? And God has given us the gift of a person, which is the Holy Spirit, to encircle, lead us, and manifest His power in our midst. But today, as we walk out and came to church, have you said, Holy Spirit, have you spoken to the Holy Spirit? Have you reached out to Him, talked to Him, Invite Him into your life. Say, lead me, show me, guide me. Because the Holy Spirit is like the wealth that you have to tap into. And so today, you know, if God has, you know, has, is speaking to you, God has some, given you a dream, a vision or something that He's calling you to do, but somehow you feel that you have not tapped into the Holy Spirit, you can today. Now the second thing I want to move on is overcome discouragement by resolving to finish. 
resolving to finish. It says in Ezra chapter 4, verse 4 and 5, that the people of the land tried to discourage the people of Judah. They troubled them in building. They hired counselors against them to frustrate their purpose all the days of King Cyrus, the king of Persia, until the reign of Darius, the king of Persia. Now, there was a delay of 18 years because they tried to frustrate him. And so what happened is that God then sent a word to encourage the people. He says, The hands of Zerubbabel have laid the foundation. His hands shall also finish it, that you will know that the Lord of hosts has sent me to you. Now, what does the word finish mean? The word finish, okay, it means to break off, fulfill, or perform. Now, I like this picture of the dog. How many of you have dogs here? You know, after you give them a shower, what they will do is they will shake. And then all the water will get, you know, to get the water off their backs, right? And so, you know, to break or to finish, it means to break off. To fulfill, to break off. And to finish means to break off from what is hindering completely to fulfill what God has called you to do. You know, many of us, we start, in the, we start doing something where we see good signs. We see, oh, little breakthroughs, little victories. And then we are scared. Wow, you know, I don't want to jinx it. What if I did something and then that's it, you know? You know, and sometimes, you know, we, we have this fear. And why, why we say is that from this verse is that what you start in the spirit, you must finish in the spirit, not in the flesh. Don't allow your fears. What if I say it, uh, then I jinxed it and then I, I, I come back. You know, I, I just want to say this verse as I was... Uh, praying about it, you know, in Revelation chapter 12, it's not in the verse, but I want to share this because I think some, some of you need to hear it. Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says this, how do we overcome? How do we overcome the works of the enemy? How can we overcome discouragement? Rev- Revelation chapter 12, verse 11, it says, and they overcome him by three things. Number one, the blood of the lamb. Number two, the word of their testimony, and number three, they did not love their lives till death. Now, three things that we need to do today. And one of it is to be able to break off and say, I will testify of what God has done in my life. You know, Hebrews chapter 12, it says this, Let us cast off every weight and sin that so easily ensnare us, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, We look to Jesus who is the author and perfecter of our faith, who for the joy set before him endured the cross, despised the shame, and sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. This says that we need to cast off. What does cast off mean? I'm going to take a moment to explain this. In Acts chapter Acts chapter 28, verse 3 and 6, it talks about how Paul was shipwrecked on an island of Malta. He was shipwrecked because they, were, they captured him and sent him to Rome. And when he was at the island of Malta, what happened is that their viper came out from the heat and fastened it on his hand. And when the natives saw the creature hanging from his hand, they said to one another, No doubt this man is a murderer. Though he escaped the sea, yet justice did not allow him to live. But what it says, he do what? He shook off. Now, Taylor Swift must have gotten her inspiration from this verse. Shake it off. I don't know if any Swifty fans going to the concert in March, but you know, shake it off. What is it that is fast? What has fastened itself on you? You need to shake it off. And the Bible tells us that he shook it off into the fire and suffered no harm. The natives were expecting that he would swell up, suddenly fall down dead. But after they looked for a long time, they saw that no harm has come to it. They changed their mind and said that he was a God. Today, God is calling you to shake off. Now, I'm going to ask Kelvin to help me do something here. Uh, just invite him to the front. I hope you can, the capture, camera can still capture. Now, what is it that we need to shake off? What does it look like to shake off? Now, if someone tell us, you cannot make it. You can turn around. Okay. And then there are people who oppose him. Opponents. Okay. There are people who doubt him. Yeah, you cannot do it. Not possible. Give up. There are people who say that, oh, you don't have resources. Got no money. 
How are you going to do it? Okay? And there were people that will criticize him. Like, what do you think you are? Now, he's going to do the Taylor Swift and then we'll shake it off. <laughs> the, how are you going to shake it off? What will you do? Uh, I will just... Shake it off. Yeah, yeah, you can. How you shake it off? <laughs> shake it off. Yeah, okay. So, okay, let's give him a hand. You can go back to seat now. You know, what does it tell us? We shake it off like what Paul did. We do what Hebrews say, we cast off. Now, what is it that you need to shake off today from your life? Is it a criticism from someone and say you cannot do it? Is it because your opponents say you sure or not? Is it people say that you don't have the resources? They got money. But if God has called you to do something, you need to shake it off and say, this is what God has called me to do. I will do it and I will finish it. Can someone say amen? amen. You know, and so when we shake it off, you know, God will begin to fulfill and help you finish that we have, you, which you have started to do. Now, the third thing, overcome doubt by reclaiming our authority. In Zechariah chapter 4, verse 10, it says, For who has despised the days of small beginnings? Now, the word despise in Hebrew, it means to disrespect, to be in contempt, and to be ashamed. Now, the exiles that returned to Jerusalem to build a temple, as, as what I said, they have no resources. They did not have someone like Dave, King David who, who gathered all the resources to build. They had nothing. And they were intimidated. They were questioned whether they have the right to build the temple. In Ezra chapter 4, okay, I'm going to share this slide. It says that there was a gap. So you can see that under King Arthur Sexus, the whole building process stopped. And what happened was this, that at the reign of King Arthur Sexus, in the beginning of his reign, they wrote a letter, uh, accusation against the inhabitants of Judah and Jerusalem. In Ezra chapter 5, verse 3, it says, At the same time, Tatanel, the governor of the region beyond the river of and Shezel Bozen, and the, the companions came to them and spoke thus to them, Who has commanded you to build the temple? Who? Who asked you to do? And so they were intimidated, not just one, but two times. But what happened? Because of the intimidation, they stopped doing it for 18 years. And they forgot the mandate that God has given to true King Cyrus to rebuild the temple. Ezra chapter 5, verse 5. But what he tells us, that but the eyes of God was upon the elders of the Jews so that they could not make them cease till a report go to Darius. You know, it tells us that when God gives you something to do, he will give you the authority. Say me authority. He'll give you the authority to complete the task despite opposition from men. In Ezra chapter 6, verse 4 and 12, okay, it's a very long passage, so I'm not going to take time to read, but I'm going to summarize what it tells us. It tells us that when they wrote a letter to the king to say that, oh, you know, they shouldn't be building, you know, what happened is that King, king Darius wrote a letter back as an edict. So this is the edict from King Darius. You know what King Darius said? When Tatanius told him that this Israelite shouldn't be building the temple, King Darius went to read King Cyrus' edict. And he came back, he wrote this and replied to him. He said, now let the expenses be paid from the king's treasury. Wow, so who's going to pay for the temple now? The king! The king Darius, a Persian king, is going to pay for the building of the temple. He said, let the gold, silver articles of the house of God, which Nebuchadnezzar took from the temple, which was in Jerusalem, be bought to Babylon, brought to Babylon, be restored and taken back to the temple, which is in Jerusalem. And deposited them in the house of the Lord. Verse 6. Now Tatania, the governor of the region beyond the river, and the companions of the Persians who are beyond the river, keep yourself from here. So King Darius is telling him, you get out. You stop. Okay? And he said this. 
Let the work of let the work of the house be alone. Let the governor of the Jews, the elders of the Jews, build the house of God on its site. And I shall issue a decree that you shall do for the elders of this Jew for the building of this house, and let the cost be paid by who? Paid by the king's expenses from the taxes on the region beyond the river. Wow, not only the king's gonna pay for it. The people in the region, that means those that are non-Jews, are going to pay for it through the taxes. Amazing, isn't it? And it says this, that whatever that they need, okay, be given to them, whether young bulls, rams, and lambs for the burnt offering, and let it be given to them day by day without fail. Wow. And it says he issued a decree that anyone who alters it, who challenges it, who questions it, let a beam be taken from his house and let the man, the critic, be hung from it. And he says, I, Darius, issued this decree and let it be done diligently. Wow. Imagine that. Imagine God calling you to do something and you say, I have no resources and he makes someone pay for it. Amen. Isn't it great? Amen. How many of you say, wow, God, I want to see that. If, do it to you. Amen. And if this is something that God has called you to do, you need to know that God will give you the authority to get it done. Now, I want to share with you that as New Testament believers today, God has not only given us power and authority, He has given us authority to accomplish what He has called us to do. Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 19, Jesus came and spoke to them saying, all authority has been given to me in heavens and earth. Therefore, go and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. You know, when Jesus received power from the Holy Spirit, He maintained authority by His relationship with Christ. Now, I want to share with you two words and definition. One is called power. What is power? It's called dunamis. Dunamis in the sense of manifestation of signs, wonders, and miracles. Now, exousia is authority. It means the right to use it. Now, your right to use the power comes from your relationship with God. Your right to use it comes from how, you know, you allow God to speak to you. And today, you know, while power is used for transforming nations and people, and power start revival, Worship sustains, or wisdom sustains it. But authority gives us access to the wisdom that God has made available to us. And so today, you know, I, I want to share, it says, you know, Bill Johnson said this, when you have your worst moment and you handle it well, it becomes the back door to your promotion. And ladies and gentlemen, today I want to leave you this verse. In the book of Joel, it says this. You know, I will say this to you today. You know, what is it that you have lost? It says, I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have eaten, the crawling locusts, the consuming locusts, the chewing locusts, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat in plenty, be satisfied, and praise the name of the Lord who has dealt wonders, wonders, wondrously with you. And my people shall never be put to shame. For you shall know that I am the midst of you. I am the Lord your God and there is no other. My people will never be put to shame. I feel that this morning, God, whoever you are, you know, God wants you to stop despising yourself. Stop doubting yourself. Stop saying that I cannot do it. But you need to stand up and say, God, you can do it. I have the power and authority and I will step out in faith. You know, in closing, I'd like you to watch this video. You know, this video is, how many of you watched The Lion King? I'm sure many of you did. You know, I love this, just a short clip. You know, as you watch the short clip, you know, I, I pray that God will speak to us. That sometimes we are like this little lion, you know, trying to find our way around. But you know, as you watch the clip, you know, just let God speak to you about what He wants to do in our midst today. So just help me play the clip, please. Thank you.
Okay, well, yeah, still sorting it out. Let me know when it's done. You know, I feel that, you know, in the clip, I just want to summarize. In the clip, it was, there was the lion, Simba, was surrounded by the hyenas. And the hyenas were mocking him. Are you the lion? Show us that you are. And Simba was running. He was running. He was hiding. He was running away from the hyenas. And finally, when he was cornered, what did he do? He turned around and he roared at the hyenas. And when he roared at the hyenas, what did the hyenas do? They, la- they, didn't ru- they didn't run away. They were laughing at him. They were mocking him. Ha, 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 ha. You know, because there were so many of them and there was only one small lion cub. But what happened is then his father showed up. His father Mustafa showed up and was standing behind him and he gave a loud roar. And what happened? All the hyenas ran away. Authority is like that. When we stand there and we say something, sometimes it sounds weak, but we know who's got our back. We have the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. And He's got our back and He's going to give the roar that all your enemies will scatter. That will silence every critic and everyone who is, who is criticizing or who is saying things that you cannot, it cannot be done. Is it ready? If not, it's okay. You'll just move on. Yeah, maybe I can send it. You all can watch it on your own. You know, it tells us, you know, in Dean Sherman, it says this, if you're unsure of ourselves, it's because we do not know who we are or in whose authority we operate. But when we know the source of authority, the power that comes of it, we begin to overcome despair, we overcome discouragement, and we overcome self-doubt. You know, in closing, I want you to, everybody stand up. And we're going to read this, this together. In the next slide, I'm going to read, I would like you to read this uh, together with me. And I want, to think, I want you to think about what is it that has been hindering you, that's holding you back, that's stopping you from really living a life of victory, a life, of, a life that is victorious, a life that is successful, a life that is, you know, fulfilling. And as you read this last slide with me, it's the, the airdrop one, I think. Do you have that? The last one? I just need the one that's airdropped uh, earlier. Yes, okay. Is it too small? Yes, a bit too small. Okay, so what does it say? Okay, I'm just going to take my phone. I realize it's a bit small. But what we're going to do is this. We're going to look at this verse. And what does it say? It says that I am I'm God's child. And the second thing is, as a disciple, okay, let's all read this together. Let's proclaim it. So as you read this, I want you to read and proclaim this in the supernatural realm over your families, over your business, your studies, your situation, and whatever that you're experiencing, whatever negative thoughts, self-doubts, I want you to read this and begin to declare it together. Shall we do it together? Okay, one, two, three. I am God's child. As a disciple, I am felt by Jesus Christ. I have been justified Righteousness. I have been tempted. I have been.
I have been chosen and appointed to bear good fruit. I am God's temple. I am a minister of reconciliation for God. I am seated with Christ, just Christ in the heavenly realm. I am God's workmanship. I may approach God with freedom and confidence. And I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Now, how many of you believe that? Come on, let's give God a hand, shall we? You know, today, even as the worship team comes back to lead us, you know, this morning as you are sitting here, as you heard the message, you know, God has been speaking to you. And there's some things that, you know, you say to me that, hey, you know, there's something that God has spoken to me today. I want to shake off. I want to shake up intimidation. I want to shake up despair. I want to shake up discouragement and doubt. But today, I want to lay hold of that which God has spoken to me. I want to tap into the power that is deposited in my life and step out in authority. If that's you, come on, just lift your hands all across this place. And let's begin to pray right now. You pray. You pray for yourself. You pray for your situation, your families, your children. You pray for your workplace, your, whatever that's happening. You begin to speak a life to those who maybe are not believers yet and you say, God, you have given me the power and authority. I think authority over the waywardness. I think authority over discouragement and despair. And today you say, God, I want to look to you because you are the giver and you are the one who can do all things more than I can imagine or comprehend. If that's you, just lift out your hands all across this place and say, God, Today, I will commit my lives to you. I want to commit my families to you. Begin to pray out loud. Begin to pray and say, God, begin to pray in the Spirit and say, whatever addictions, whatever, whatever struggles that you are experiencing in your mind, begin to think authority. Lord, I think authority over the doubts, unbelief, even temptations that God they may be experiencing. And Lord, today I declare that God, you have set me, you have come to set me free. And begin to pray right now. And if you want some ministry, you know, I can invite you to come to the front because the elders and pastors and we'll be here to pray with you. And if you want someone to stand with you, you come to the front right now. Because we will pray with you. We will stand with you. So I invite you to come for those who say, Today, God, I want to step out from where I am. I want to step out from where my comfort zone is. I want to step out from, from doubts or unbelief and discouragement. I want to step into the power and authority that you have given to me. So I'm going to invite you to come if you want to come as the worship team will lead us in worship.